The cell door creaks open, startling Asher from his thoughts. His brow furrows in confusion. He expects to see either a guard or perhaps a magistrate standing before him. Instead, an elderly woman approaches, desert wrappings concealing her features. She stops within the threshold of the cell and stares at the young, hatless man. Asher's eyes widen and he is stunned, only able to return first one question, then another. Sarai? Grandmother? The elderly woman lets out a cry and begins weeping both of her hands held up to her face. Asher rushes forward and embraces her tightly. After a moment, he steps back and says, How is this possible? How are you here? What of the gods? Grandmother, I did not kill Gazav. And she, without a shred of decorum, spits on the ground at the mention of that name. That Nahash. You have many questions, I know. I can answer a few on the way, but you must flee, Asher. There are those who seek to do our family harm. They're after what we protect, and they know that you are here. She begins to walk to the door. Did you tell him anything? Asher thinks for a moment. When barely spoken for a few minutes before, well, I believe he may have poisoned me. He asked of my father's well-being, and he pales. I told him. I I told Kazav where my father lives. She spits again at the mention of that name. Grandmother, what on Galarian is going on? My father never spoke of protecting anything. He barely spoke a word about his past. And Kazav mentioned something about fleeing from another plane. She sighs. Son of my son, this has nothing to do with Galarian. We will talk on the way. We must leave now. Not without my hat. I risked my life to get it out of that burning building. I'm not about to leave it behind. She shakes her head. A hat? I don't know who's the bigger fool, you or your father. To think for your whole life, he told you nothing? She looks at him, smiles, and snaps her fingers. In an instant, her appearance has immediately changed to that of a town guard. In a gruff voice, she says, Let's go, prisoner! And gives Asher a wink. With barely a mumbled word about speaking with the defender, Sarai scoops up Asher's hat and escorts the very confused young man out of the prison and into the cool night air. Asher looks at the inside of his hat in the moonlight. He runs a finger along the inside of it, smiles and sighs with relief as he places it on his head. This is Pot Against the Machine. Pot Against the Machine Welcome back to Pot Against the Machine, the only Pathfinder actual play podcast where eight people enter, four people at most leave. I'm your host, and here's everybody. Hello. Hi. Hello. Feeling good tonight? Feeling confident? Uh. Do we have a third option? (laughs) (laughs) Neither good nor confident. Got it. I didn't say that. I wanted to know all of the options available before deciding which one I feel. Uh, Good, bad, confident, non-confident, viscous is always an option. Oh, definitely feeling viscous. Thankfully, I've been just powering down all the thick warm yogurt I could to prep for this episode. (laughs) All dairy-free. Don't worry, scrappers. And... Uh, I'm also feeling guardedly optimistic. Same. We're going to live forever. Personally, I'm not loving your chances, but that's just me. How much of that stems from our chances versus your disposition towards us in general, though? A little from column A, a little from column B, I'd I'd say. When you say you're not loving our chances, you mean because we're definitely going to win? And you're like, oh, I don't want that for you. No, I'm, I'm always rooting for you. And, mm. um... Yeah. All right. 
<laughs> well, last time on the show, the very capable four just kind of stood around while Kira punched herself in the face a bunch of times, and some ogres came out, and it turns out that those ogres were just stalling because Kolgara had a rather long walk before she emerged, walked right past the group, ignored Vargas trying to hit her, and actually, I believe she just basically plowed right through Vargas, mm -hmm. ignored Brixby trying to cast a spell on her, and walked right out, and it turns out she was holding Dinvaya hostage. Or Hellsgarg was, and she joined, and we had a nice little conversation where um, basically said, you've got one more chance, you can submit to Hellion and we can stop from killing you, or um, we can remove your skin and hand it over to the god who really definitely is totally a god. And um, after some heated back and forth, uh, you gave her something that delighted her, a, a four-on-four -four challenge in the Scrapmaster's arena the next day at high noon. Then we parted ways with Dinvaya still a hostage in the Scrapmaster's arena, and um, everybody's set to meet tomorrow. And that's where we are. Gotta say, I don't think I've heard the word flens so many times in a two-week period as I have these last two weeks. Thank you for that. Well, they are very flimsy. Wish it was a couple characters shorter. Could make that a wordle start. <laughs> right. But I guess I'll just use flims. Well, I mean, it, it's got the two E's, so it's kind of a waste. Considering the high noon nature of our engagement, that everyone keep their Western Knight hat from the Silver Disc Hall so that we can all approach in style. <laughs> oh, yeah. They've canonically been buried in the uh, bag of holding. This whole time. <laughs> they smell vaguely of, of German. <laughs> <laughs> Not mine. Well, he probably felt extra comfortable around those hats as they did come from his gambling parlor. That's true. Formerly. Now it's the uh, library. So where are we and what time is it? It's um just after sunset and you've been given leave to walk out of Scrapmaster's Arena, where are you all going? I mean, I guess back to the Clockwork Chapel, unless you guys wanted to go and talk to Red Tooth. I mean, like, if we if we had, like, some Silex to bury or something that we could blow up later, that would be great to go and do that, but I don't think we have the ability to do anything fun tonight. So I think we're going to go back to the Clockwork Chapel, rest, and prepare for tomorrow. Not to speak for everybody. Yeah. As fun as it would be to, like, bury that under the walls of the arena so we could, like, blow it up as we're winning. <laughs> I feel like someone would probably notice that unless we did it at, like, one in the morning and then we wouldn't get our sleep and we wouldn't get all our stuff back. Well, that's what we sent Whiskey Fist to do. I mean, I was literally like, let's just tell the rat folk to go out there and just plant a bunch of bombs all through Scrapmaster's arena. But it doesn't really help us. So we like how big, uh, I really need to impress upon the listener at home that like one of the big issues here is that Scrap Masters Arena is massive. Uh, we as a party, while we do stand in like front of each other in hallways sometimes do relatively well in close to medium combat, but like 200 feet between us and someone else creates a really interesting problem. So I think that's going to go into some of our spell selection tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to go back to the Clockwork Chapel. Yeah, here's firmly over this whole place. All right. So uh, nothing gives you any trouble on the way back to the Clockwork Chapel. Is there anything you want to accomplish or um, talk about before bedding down for the night? Wouldn't you love to know the tactical discussions that we had this evening, Sam? <laughs> Don't you worry. The Very Capable Four did have a pretty in-depth conversation about some of the tactics and things they'll use tomorrow. However, you, like our listener, might have to wait to hear it in Scrapmaster's Arena. Those poor listeners. Think of the listeners, Zach. I know. Oh, they won't have to wait too long. They're crying. I'm just thinking about like all the discussion on the Discord of... 
oh, I wish I knew coming in what they were going to do so I could, you know, just really follow along at home with my scorecard. And... <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think um, we'll, we'll throw them this much of a bone. We distribute some things that one person had been holding to everybody. Whoa. And mm-hmm. and uh, maybe there's some fabrication. Who could say? Mm-hmm. Perhaps. I will give. Uh, how about this? We'll give the listeners this. I fabricate sixty bullets for Asher when we get home that evening. That's but too then many. we go into the uh, the locker room and the door shuts in front of the camera, <laughs> and you just hear muffled voices on the other side. We'll hand out court interpretation drawings uh, next week. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need the stenographer's readout on that conversation. It's all admissible <laughs> under uh, Meta versus GM. 2022. I don't see what the formerly Facebook company has anything to do with <laughs> our proceedings. Now, when they sued General Motors over something that makes yeah. the whole thing make sense. I got it. Yeah, no, I got it. yeah, I mean, the folks in legal are better at making these jokes than me. It's They're true. much faster on their feet. Bunch of yucks down in legal. <laughs> it's a laugh a minute over there. Oh, well, all right. Anything else you want to do before going to bed? Or is it time for me to throw one last wrench in the works? Wrench away. I've put away all of my percentile dice. I can't help you. I will say, Asher does not sleep in Denvaya's bed. He will sleep on the floor. <laughs> That's good. Oh, no. Kira was being 110% serious. This is, uh, Dinvaya's like almost dead. You don't sleep in an almost dead person's bed. You sleep in a kidnapped person's bed or possibly a <laughs> dead person's bed. Sure. Makes sense. She has some propriety. Come on. What about Vargas or Brixby? Oh, no. No, no, no. All, all out of respect. All right. Because there's a glyph of warding on that bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The bed itself um, is also a junk golem. It's a mimic. Yeah. Vargas was one of the only two people last time who didn't sleep in the bed. <laughs> uh, the wrench I'm throwing in is that you all level up overnight. Oh, oh that's not a wrench. Oh, well, it might mess up your plans. Boldly unprepared for that. Are you sure you wanted to level us up? Zach, stop. What are you saying, Zach? I mean, oh, I, I love it. I'm super happy. <laughs> it's like, teacher, you didn't collect the homework. You don't, okay. Nope. Never mind. No, I love no, it. I'm so stoked. Level. <laughs> and just draw. Zach doesn't get a level up. Frowny face. Fair. Totally fair. All right. Um,. Who wants to roll HP first? Uh, I'll go. All right. D10. Oh, that's a bummer. That's a three. Got a five. A little bit better. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, who's next? I'll go for it. All right. One second here. D20 HP. Oh, yeah. Huge. Oh, I rolled a six on my D6. I don't need what you're going to roll, unless you're also going to roll a six. I got a two, so take your six. Yay. Brixby be the melee monster, and I now realize why you asked me if I was sure. I know what you're going to do with your level three spells. <laughs> I have so many. Uh, I love it. Uh, All right. Uh, who's next? I'll roll a d10. All right. I got a seven for you. You beat that? Oh, thank you, because I had a nine that wobbled onto a one. I will take that seven. Nice. And how about Mr. Vargas? Vargas is a D8, I believe. Yes, he is. Okay. I got a five. Oh, you beat my four. All right, and anybody have any level up highlights that you'd like to share or changes to your strategy that you'd like to bring up to the group before you know we star wipe to the next day 
Anything interesting you want to share with the listeners? Well, listeners, I can cast level three spells. That's what we were talking about before. Finally, I got them. That's what I'm stoked about. Not stoked about that. Excellent. I finally get my uh, plus two when I activate my uh, empowered arm. So that's fun. Asher uh, is back to gunslinger. Whoa. Hey. It was not an easy decision, but I'm hoping that Asher lives beyond level six or else the level of Paladin would have been more beneficial for this final hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think otherwise, despite the fact that we all leveled up in a non-metagaming sense, I would imagine that things are a little grim. I mean, like, we're we're kind of optimistic, but, I mean, let's be real. Um, from a meta point of view and from our experience, like, performance combat is a set of skills that none of our characters are dealt with. Two of us are dump stat charisma, myself and, and Vargas. And, I mean, the idea of winning the crowd over is going to be pretty hard. And if you don't, it disadvantages the, many of the roles you make. So, it's definitely something that I think Brixby is taking into account, just personally he's like recounting how today went kira is one of the strongest the most capable individuals he knows and watching them like do i mean kind of get robbed in the arena but also have that experience with uh Hellskark definitely encourages him to kind of like huddle up with the group discuss a little bit of tactics but i would also say things are i'll be real there's a gravity i think probably everyone's feeling Yet serious enough that I'm not making the joke about where we all feel gravity due to Earth and its mass. <laughs> That's how you know it's like serious. It's good that you resisted it in this trying time. <laughs> yeah, no, agreed. I think Kira's been pretty quiet since they left the since they left the ring, specifically since they left Dinvaya. I think she'll probably disappear at some point during the night just to place like a single sticker with the paper on the back so that Denvaya can like use it whenever she wants that says honestly just like sorry sad face um and please my pillow and then so it's just slightly less sad as she's leaving she's like we'll make it up to you and we'll give you a new sticker in the morning when we rescue you it'll be great also i'm not using your bed can she put a sticker on the bed <laughs> with, with, with a glyph of warding i feel like there's a lot of stickers the glyph of warding's not real that fair, was, fair. That bad. was a joke. <laughs> just making sure, Sam. I just don't know anymore. All right. Well, the night passes. Nobody interrupts your sleep. Nobody barges into the clockwork chapel to murder you all. Morning arrives. It's the big day. What's everybody doing? Since we have time, Asher will spend an hour to fix one of the eight broken pistols. Uh, yeah. Bringing that down to seven, and now he has a total of three non-broken pistols. So that if he misfires twice, he has a third gun to go to. That's entirely too many. I'm going to add to my sheet, fixed gun today, question mark, yes. And he's also, as he prays in the morning and prepares for the day... He is preparing a spell that he has not yet used, and perhaps we'll see it today. Same with Brixby, for sure. And that's all we'll say. Oh, I'm going to say it too. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> all right, well, shall we fast forward to high noon? Yeah, Brixby casts mage armor like two hours before we actually go there. 10 o'clock. Just want to put that in there for the listener. Unfortunately, there's heavy traffic on the way to the Scrapmasters <laughs> Arena, and you don't make it in time. So they killed Dinvanya? Yeah, they kill Dinvanya? her. It's just a traffic jam. You hate to see it. Ah, oh, man. Like, screenshot or a picture of the ways. Like, <laughs> we can't get around. It's too much traffic. We're trying. Who would write that into this book? Crystal, it's Crystal Frazier, right? Did Crystal Frazier do this book? No. Or is it no. This is uh, Nick Logue. Nick, how could you write in that traffic jam? It's, it's, uh, there's nothing I can do. and you know, It's a random table for traffic. Yeah. They, they text you back just a picture of like a shrugging emoji and then like a severed head emoji and 
frowny face. <laughs> <laughs> but you come back to Scrap Masters Arena, and it's it's pretty quiet. There's there's no big crowd assembled this time. It looks like they haven't put out the call for people to come, and they're sort of functionaries for the Lords of Rust around, just like in the building, but it's it's not a big crowd. It looks like you've got a an empty arena match on your hands. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, for everybody. Literally no one wants to listen to us like muddle through performance combat again. That one Google Doc worked so hard and it still barely did its job. So It's a really nice Google Doc though. Thank you. As you step into the arena, you see standing across from you the towering ten-foot-tall troll, the chainsaw-wielding orc, one of those acolytes of Hellion, and uh, looks like a smiler with a big old smile on his face and a gun in his hand. Asher looks to his companions and says, I'll be taking that gun soon. Just so everyone knows, we are, as I mentioned earlier, we are literally 180 feet away from our opponents right now. That is how big this arena is. 180. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Kolgar is going to step up a little bit in front of the others. Uh, just make herself about 170 feet away from all of you. And she'll yell over. I almost thought you weren't going to show up. How else were we going to get that chainsaw? And she looks down at the chainsaw and uh, hits the button on it to rev it up. And it starts making that noise as the chain starts spinning around. She's, you're welcome to try. Yeah, just don't use all the, uh, the energy in there. Big stuff is hopefully going to cut your head off with it. Let's do this. I just want you to know when I pull that off your corpse, I will be covering it in stickers and glitter. After your blood. Your blood first. The stickers and the glitter adhere better it's going right the, on top. the base layer of blood. It will look really stupid with stickers on it. it, it it's awesome like this. It, heavy metal, like... Look at it. Stick... You would look really stupid well, with stickers. Everything looks stupid with stickers, so... Oh, it's on now. Oh. Kira goes into a rage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, roll for initiative. <laughs> now, before we begin, we should see Denvaya to know whether you've held up your end of the bargain, that she yet lives. Uh, she's safe down in the lower levels. They've got to express instructions to bring her out in the unlikely event of your victory. I'll sense that motive. A 22. Seems like she's telling the truth. It also seems like she thinks that's pretty unlikely. Well, <laughs> sure. Well, how about some initiative rolls? Oh, yeah. I tell you right now, the Acolyte of Hellion got a 2. You get that information Ooh. free. Oh, man. How about Brixby? 16 for Brix. Alright, 16 for bricks. So far, faster than the Acolyte. Oh, uh, how about Asher? Maybe with this level up, our allegiances have changed, because I'm an Anish twin with Brixby today. Uh, 16.4. Ooh, 0. 0.3 for Brixbo. And uh, how about Kira? An 18 on the die for 23. Wow. Vargas. Vargas got an 11 for a 13. All right, not too shabby. Let me just finish up my initiatives here. We are gonna go to Kira. Cool, did I? Did we all buff before this and I missed it? I know um, uh -huh. you threw down your major armor crate. Okay, that's gonna be my first turn. Yeah, this is real far away from, from the bad guys. Let's start with Shield. Yeah, let's start with shield. No, no, I lied. We're gonna start with enlarged person. Enlarged person. 
All right, and Hellskarg is going to move up 60 feet. She does have her gun in hand once more. And then Kolgara is going to move up a little bit less than 60 feet. She's standing next to Hellskarg, and she's going to go into a rage. And um, Asher is up. Cool. Asher is going to... He is going to retrieve a stowed item from his backpack for his standard action. And he is going to stay put for his move. All right, Brixby. Brixby is going to, looking across the dust at the approaching green-skinned adversaries, root around in his spell components pouch, pull out a small gnarled botanical looking piece of something, shave off a bit, crush it in his hand, and we're all moving fast now because we're hasted, buddy. Everybody's hasted, plus 30 to your move, plus one to your AC. When you're making a full attack action, you can make an additional attack at your highest BAB. I don't like it. And uh, he's gonna move north 10 feet. There we go. And that's my turn. All right, Vargas. Okay, Vargas is, much like Kira, going to just stand where he is and begin casting a spell. And that is his entire turn. All right. And uh, this Smiler is going to fan out to the north a little bit. And then the... um, Acolyte is gonna rush up behind the group, sort of just staying back, and we are back around to Kira for round two. There's so many extra numbers on my screen now, you just really want to hit something. Alright, so the end of the first turn, so she should be enlarged, uh, which means she can safely move up, and let's just all cards on the table. I'll have her move up once, and then um, cast shield. That'll be my turn. All right. Um, Hellskarg. I think she's just going to get a little bit closer to Kira. And um, she's just going to stand there smiling at her. And just sort of go, Rematch. (laughs) Not pulling punches. Me and um, Kolgara is gonna fan out a little bit north of Hellsgarg and double move. And then we're up to Asher. Asher is going to drop his pistol to the ground so that he has both hands to wield this time worn laser rifle <laughs> as he is going to take two shots, thanks to Haste, at Kolgara. For that first shot, I'm going to need you to roll a d100 first. (laughs) I've been waiting for this all day. An 85. 85. The weapon functions better than anticipated, granting a plus two bonus on attack rolls made with that weapon this round. (laughs) Delicious. All right, we're going to make the first shot with the portal dice. It just feels like a portal dice kind of day. Oh, yeah. That's a 16 on the die for a 28 against touch. And this is Kolgara? Yeah. Yeah, 28 will hit touch. Weirdly. Okay. That is going to be 2d6 of fire damage. Okay, that's seven points of fire on the first shot, and then a swift action smite. I should have smote, like, the first round. Sorry, guys. It's pretty tense. And the second shot with haste. That is a dirty 20 against touch. (laughs) That will hit, yeah. That is eight points of damage. And because we're level six now, might as well burn the third charge. So it's a lot lower to hit, but it's also a lot lower if you're dead. It's also a dirty 20. 
Whew. Yeah, that, that'll hit. You get that charisma, charisma bonus. Uh, so three of the eight shots that this gun will ever do before it never <laughs> functions again. <laughs> that is 11 points of fire damage. Ooh. She doesn't look happy about that. Yes, perhaps you should prepare the people downstairs to bring Denvaya up shortly. Asher will call out with a wink, and that's his turn. All right, Brixby. Brixby is going to swift action, bring the Scorching Ray Wand to his hand. Looking at Kogara across the dust, he's going to say, Can't be lucky all the time. Roll a will save, Sam. Ooh, that's a bad roll. We are looking at a 13. You are blind per glitter dust. She's not happy with that. But you're sparkly. She just said that stickers look stupid. How do you think she feels about <laughs> sparkles? She can't see herself. <laughs> that's true. It's for our benefit. And uh, that's Brisby's turn. She can't see. I guess is what he says. It's a uh, free action at the end of his turn. And then uh, Vargas is up. At the start of Vargas's turn, he gets big. So, as enlarged person finishes being cast, then he is just going to start moving forward. He is going to do 30 feet towards the opposing side, and that will be his turn. All right, and the um, Smiler is going to move up towards Kolgara. I guess he'll double move up behind Kolgara. And then the Acolyte is gonna double move up behind Hellsgarg. And Kira is up again. The original plan was to go for the troll because I will never sleep again if I don't kill her. But you know, what's her face is so blind. Ah, that was time for her. Kira's gonna charge the troll. So I think she's going to move, like, if there's 30 feet between them, I'll move within 10 feet of her, which I assume she'll also be able to hit me, but good luck. I've got a lot of things. She will um, swing a claw out at you as she had a readied attack um, for when you got in her range. And that is a natural 20. I hate her so much. I hate her so much. With the claw. So I'm going to roll to confirm that. I didn't say power attack, so that is a 29 to confirm. I'm oh my God. going to kill her. I'm going to do it. Only 11 damage on the claw as Kira comes in. Did you roll the 20% miss chance? The Can you still miss on a on a on a critical? It's a uh, mm-hmm. attack. Ah, I love yeah. that for us. That's yeah, your concealment. Would you believe I rolled a nineteen? <laughs> yes. I would believe that. <laughs> oh my god, Jeff. Oh, uh, sky medal from us yeah. to you, Jeff. A little bit of personal sky medal. <laughs> I'm just gonna send a gift card in the mail. Friendship <laughs> sky medal to Jeff. Yeah, I have one left. Can I give it to Jeff? <laughs> no, no, no. You can only use it for Jeff. It's the Jeff medal. That's right. Jeff is off the show. Oh man. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna charge. That is a. Hang on, pretty sure it's a 16. Yeah, it's a 16. Oh, I was so excited for a second. 16 plus, oh my gosh, 16 plus 14. 30 to hit? Does 30 hit? Yeah, surprisingly, a 30 will hit. <laughs> Deal. Actually, I guess it's a 32 with charge. <laughs> my bad. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 11, 16, 27 points of damage. Our friend is going to drop her auto grapnel because it's silly that she had it anyways, and she's going to full attack you. So we'll start with the bite. Uh, that is a 16. No good on the bite. Claw. 18. Uh, meets beats. All right, let me roll that 20% miss chance. Uh, that's a 93. 
So this time she'll get you with nine damage on the claw. And claw number two. Crack die. Crack die. That is not gonna hit you. So terrible. She's not happy. Her turn is over. Kolgara is very, very upset. And blind. Very blind. Yeah. Can I, I'm just gonna tack on free action at the end of my turn. Yell across at Kogara. You look really cute with glitter on. Excellent look. She's gonna snap her head vaguely in your direction and just growl. And um, it almost seems like her pure rage is just like healing her just with anger. Uh, she's just gonna get a little bit of juice back. Yeah, and Asher is up. Oh, uh, she rolls a will save at the end of her turn to see if she's still blind. Oh, yeah, she gets a will save. And she does have a decent bonus while she's in a rage, because she's mad. And that is her third natural 20 will save. She is willful, and she can see. For now. All right. And um, Asher, you are now up. Asher is going to take a five-foot step to the south, so he has a clear line past the embiggened Vargas and he is going to as a swift action spend a grip point to focus his aim and he is going to rapid shot this this laser (laughs) rifle at (laughs) Kolgara oh my god (laughs) it is a minus two it's a minus two guys I'm factoring it in and you don't have that plus two anymore I know. It's a bummer. It's unlikely to hit. Let's start with the Sandstorm D20 from Norse Foundry. Okay. That is an... It's still, thanks to the smite, uh, even with the minus two, it's a 21 against touch. Weirdly, that does hit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, that is... 18 points of damage. That's a lot. 11 on 2d6, 4 from the smite, and 3 from the focused aim. This one's lower, though. Only by 2, so it's a 19 against touch. (laughs) That will still hit. 14 points of fire damage on this shot. Oh my god. Alright. This is the last one at my full BAB. Uh, Oh, and it's a lovely roll. It's a 27 against touch. Yep. Uh, Damage keeps going down, though. That's only 12 points of fire damage. All right. And for the final shot, leaving only one remaining in this time, Morton Laser (laughs) Rifle. And the lowest to hit. Oof, uh, that is only a 14 against touch. Still hits. Oh. That is 13 points of fire damage. How much damage did you just do in that? That was like 60 or something? That was 57. It was 57 damage in one turn, four shots with a laser rifle for those keeping track at home. I was really hoping to crit on one of those four hits, obviously, but I'm pretty pleased with that turn. I would be. Yeah, we're up to Brixby. Let's see, I believe Jeff said second verse, same as the first. Brixby steps five feet forward, narrows his eyes at uh, Kolgara, and sees the smiler behind him and goes, all right. And again, will saves for both of them this time. All right, we'll start with Kolgara. Uh, that is a 16. Meets beats, unfortunately. All right, the Smiler will be slightly harder pressed to hit that DC. Oh, 16 on the die. All right, they are both okay, if not slightly glittery. And that's going to be the end of my turn. Right, and that'll bring us to Vargas. Big, big Vargas. Okay. Vargas is first going to cast Mirror Image 
which because we're level six now, I get two extra images on top of what I roll. Uh, which unfortunately I only rolled a one. So <laughs> there are still just three images. So there are four Varguses again, just like the last time. Four giant Varguses. Yep. And then he will move another 30 feet forward, just stomping his way through the arena. <laughs> All right. Well, I think the Smiler is going to just take a couple steps to the south. And he's going to shoot his gun at Kira. So that is a 17 versus touch. Uh, versus touch. Oh my god. Yeah, I forgot how low my touch is. <laughs> I get really cocky because everything else is great. I have a 9. I've got a 9 touch. 20%. I'll roll that 20% mischance. Like, god, no, Sam. No, but uh, yeah, I'm near 20%. Yeah, that's 84. Yeah, okay. Alright, Kira gets shot for 7 bludgeoning and piercing. He does not seem to notice. Alright, which will take us to our friend the Acolyte. The Acolyte's just gonna step up to Hellscard and just pop off a little spell. And it's Gira's turn. Alright, if I don't move, I can use all three attacks this time, right? Yeah. Chill right here in her face. Cool. Let's try that and hope for hope for Jeff luck. Oh, that was a 19 and then went to a 9. So we're immediately off to a bad start. Still, 9 plus uh, 14 on the first one. 23. 23 will hit. 25 points of damage on first one. That's a lot of damage. Yeah. I'm inclined to swear, but it won't do it. 16 plus 12 for the second one. That will hit. Oh my god, haste is so fun. I love this. <laughs> 5, 10, 11, 27 points of damage. Wow. Uh, I'm going to hit her again. Or, you know, try to. <sighs> nope, that was uh, 2 plus 7, so not uh, not a hit. It's a 9. Yeah, she 9. Touch? It's not a touch, but... <laughs> well, you've succeeded in getting her attention. She's going to bring the... Uh, Is she going to run away? She's going to bring the full attack to you. And I think this time we're going to do power attack. Let me just make sure that she has it. She's got to have it, right? Of course. She has it. Troll. That's racist. First one is a 20 with the bite. Yeah, meat speeds. All right. Uh, 20% miss chance. 88 and that is going to be 19 damage on the bite. What kind of teeth does she have? Claw. She's got the big tusks. Oh, fair. Um, that is going to be a 21 with claw number one. Um, I'll hit, maybe. Um, the miss chance, 62. Really stealing my moment from me. Minimum damage, that is going to be 12 damage on the claw. Claw number two. Natural two, so that will not hit. So no rend town this time. Woohoo. That's the good news. The bad news is that Kolgara is angry and um, she's got a chainsaw and she can see one person that she can charge right now. Is it the Smiler? Um, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so she's gonna charge in on Kira, and Kira gets an attack of opportunity. All right, let's do this the right way. 18 on the die, plus, which, which of the numbers do I use? Your highest. Yeah, you used highest. Yeah, you used okay, highest. 18 plus 14, 30. Well, we're going to edit in the right number there. 18 plus 14. It doesn't matter either. <laughs> um, 6, 11, 13, 16, 
29 points of damage. Right, and it doesn't seem like it all goes through. Mm, fine. But it also seems like she's really hurt. And I'm just going to read you one thing from Kogara's stat block, and that is Kogara always power attacks. <laughs> Crack die. I'm going to guess that a 28 hits. Uh, I have no clever answer. Yeah, that, that hits. Okay. Concealment. Oh, concealment. I don't like this concealment. Yeah, 88 again. <sighs> okay, well, this was fun. I enjoyed that first round of three attacks. Low roll, low roll. 25 damage on the chainsaw. I'm gonna get the stupid chainsaw. Just the one chainsaw hit. And um, yeah, her turn's over. Asher is up. Oh, Asher can see that Kira is getting surrounded. And he has one last charge on this time-worn laser rifle. Really wish I had more. Alas, I don't. But he will still uh, make it count and might as well use it. No point lugging this thing around with a nine strength if it only has one charge. <laughs> so, uh, spending another grip point to focus his aim on the smote target of Kolgara. He's going to say, he's going to shout across the arena. Kolgara is, for those of you listening, 85 feet away in this eerily quiet large arena this rifle was on the smilers headquarters they served you and they fell and with this shot your reign here ends and that is a 19 against touch um well before we resolve that can you roll me a d100 as using the last charge on a time warm weapon has a 50% oh, no. chance of a glitch. Oh, no. Well, that's just rude, but sure. 79. Pretty good roll. A 79 is just functions normally. It would have been cool if something cool had happened. Uh, Insta kills your target. You know, something cool is about to happen. Yeah, I was about to say. Okay, so 19 does indeed hit Touch AC on Kogara. Oh, ho, ho. 11 on 2d6 plus 7 is 18 points of fire damage. Well, you get a grip point back. Yes! Kogara does not fall down, though. Ferocity. Classic orc. Whew. This is tense. And he will drop the now useless laser rifle to the ground. He's five feet away from his pistol, so since it's in an adjacent square, I think he can pick it up off the ground as a move action, right? Yeah. Perfect. So then he, now he still has his loaded gun in his hand for next round. All right, Brixby is up. All right, Brixby, seeing Asher do an inordinate amount of damage, is, is concerned about Hellskark. So scraping the bottom of his spell component pouch, I'm actually going to need will saves from Kolgara, the Smiler, and Hellscarf, but not the Thrall of Hellion, because that's how I'm uh, putting it right here. They are outside of the 10 foot radius. All right, we'll start with Kolgara's will save. Bad will save. That is a 12. She is blind again. Sure, she is extra happy about that. You said the Smiler. The Smilers will say the super great 20. It is. <laughs> They're fine. <laughs> and then Hellskarg. Hellskarg is a little bit willful. This isn't a fear effect, is it? It is not. Oh, then she's blind. She is blind. All right. And that is Bricks Bean's turn again. All out of glitter dust. Or am I? That's my turn. You're a hero. I'm just the cheerleader. All right, Vargas, you are up. Okay. Vargas is going to st- 
step up and from right here, he is going to toss a grenade at a point where it can be... I have a 20 foot radius that doesn't hit Kira is what I'm trying to figure out. And he tosses an arc grenade right there. And all four of them need to do a reflex save, DC 15, to try and get half damage. Actually, wait, no, they won't do that till next turn. Because it goes off at the start of the next turn. And um, let's see, we got a Smiler here. Standing next to this grenade. I'm going to just roll a intelligence check here yeah. <laughs> because they've been around these things they know what a grenade is probably crack die i need to stop rolling this giant die okay so he doesn't know what it is he rolled very badly he is going to reload and he's gonna take a five foot step to the north and he's gonna shoot vargas Switching to the smaller dice so I don't have those problems. And that is a 14 versus touch. That would be a hit, except Vargas is going to knock it out of the air. Oof. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. So cool. <laughs> so good. <laughs> what an unexpected twist. Right. This giant metal hand. <laughs> if he has a second shot, I can only do that once per round. He does not have a second shot. It's only got two levels. All right, and then this Acolyte. Let's see if this Acolyte is smart enough to know about that grenade. Yeah, this Acolyte is smart. Takes a five foot step up, move action to pick up the grenade, and is going to try to throw it. What's the range increment on? 20 feet. Yeah, that's why I had to keep inching forward to be able to throw it far enough to not hit Kira. It's going to try to throw it AC5 at back here to clear Kolgara. Yeah, so the Acolyte is rolling at a minus two to hit DC5. <laughs> Just barely got it. So the grenade is now back here. It is Kira's turn. So that explodes on Vargas's next turn. Yeah. So it can just, like, run past it? Yeah, you can just get out of the 20-foot um, blast radius. Yeah, and I'm just going to really quickly go visit my good friend Asher. You don't want to take a swing at old Kalgar before you do? So yeah, all right, here we go. This is, I'm not going to regret this. This is fine. Sorry, I don't mean for you to play your character. I meant to try and play it for you. No, but I do like you're right, though, because she's upset enough that this would be a thing. And then, you know, when, when we die, we'll just all remember uh, what Jeff said. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can move like 70 feet after this, right? Like. Wait, you can move after? Yeah, the haste oh. is legit. Yeah, if you just take the one swing. Oh my God, how fun. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just hit, hit her once and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you have like what, cool. like a 40 move speed as a barbarian plus 30. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was thinking. One swing, and then you still have 70 feet or so to run away, strategically. Excellent, great. Okay, well that's an 18 plus 14. Oh no, 32. Aha. A 32 will hit the blinded Kolgara, mm. despite her not losing her dex. Sounds like the proud owner of a new chainsaw. 10, 26 points of damage. The stickers still look stupid. Yes. Don't ruin my chainsaw. I'm ruining it. <laughs> um, cool. So satisfying. And now I'm going to run away. Just a quick jog back here. I'll keep back for that chainsaw. No one else touch it. It's mine. And Hellsguard cannot take an attack of opportunity because she's blind. I'll end up right in your face. Next to my good friend, Asher. Amazing. I'll excitedly say, hey, that was really cool with the gun. I'm sorry that it's exploded now. Hey, thanks. And, um, Talskarg is going to basically scream with rage, and then she's going to try to make her will save. She wastes a turn, blind and very, very angry. That's not going to do it. Yeah, she got a seven. DC 16, just moving forward. All right. 
Sparkly and blind. If my math is right, there's one more round of haste, so like, it dies on Brixby's turn after next. Yes, not this turn, but the next turn. Mm-hmm. All right. Shouldn't have given you that level. <laughs> All right, Asher is up. Yeah, feeling that the haste juice is on its last juice. Asher will spend another grip point to get this time the uh, man, my uh, <laughs> adrenaline's powered out. Daring Vault would get a 20 foot boost his speed so he can move 80 feet. That allows him to move south out of the range of the grenade, but within 25 feet of Hellscarg so we can take a single shot. She's not smote yet, but she is blind. Almost a 20, as such a tease. Still a natural 12 is going to be a uh, 23 against touch. That will hit. I miss rolling 2d6. This 1d8 just feels a little bit less satisfying. Especially when you roll minimum. I'm sorry I trash talked to you. Uh, that is only two points of damage. All right. And Brixby. Glitter dust again. Brixby is going to come down to his friend Kira. And he's going to say, Good show, big stuff. Now, got a little bit more of this speed juice, so go give him hell, eh? And uh, he's going to vanish her. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. So in case you're not blind, she's still invisible. And that's my turn. And that'll bring us to Vargas, and I believe that is when the grenade goes off. The grenade explodes, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, wow. That's higher than I wanted to roll. 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then one more. 18, and I have to roll to see if I can get half of that. Oh, I actually passed that roll. So I take nine points of electricity damage as this thing explodes and only hits me. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) First thing he's going to do is cast a spell he has never used before. And you see his arm glow and then it just gets surrounded by these like weird shadows that look almost like a shadow of his arm. And he has cast the spell Umbral Weapon on himself, specifically onto his arm. Then as a swift action, he is going to empower his arm. Using his uh, two points of empowerment, he's going to give it a plus one, bringing it up to plus two, and use the second point to make it flaming. Then he's going to take his five foot step, and thanks to haste, he can make two regular attacks. He can't do any uh, magic attacks since he used his spell part of it to cast Umbral, but he can make two regular attacks. Uh, That is a four on the die, so... (laughs) That is, I'm pretty sure, going to be a miss, but thanks to Umbral Weapon, I get to re-roll that. And if the second one hits, I get to deal 1d8 magic damage instead of my normal damage. Uh, That is a 2, so that also misses. Uh, Second swing. Okay, that is a 16 on the die. So that is a plus eight, but it's a minus two for that, but then it's a plus, so it just stays plus eight. Uh, So that is a 24 against regular AC. That will hit. Okay, so this will deal 2d6 plus four because I'm big. Plus, aiming adds 1d6 of fire. So this one will be the fire. So that is 13 points of magical bludgeoning and one point of fire. All right. That fire might be important. Because yeah, that means she won't heal. That is his turn. Our friend, the Smiler, is going to just take a five-foot step just to get a little bit of space away from Fargus and reload and deadly aim. Take a shot at Giant Vargas. That is an 8 versus touch. Uh, That is a miss. 
You don't even have to bother hitting it out of the air. Yeah, no, even Giant Vargas still has an 11 touch. <laughs> and the Acolyte is going to cast a spell on Hellscarg and then just kind of pop around to the south here. He inflicted moderate wounds because he's switching sides. <laughs> it's true. Get with the winning team. And uh, Kira. Invisible Kira is up. Oh, that's right. Forgot about the invisible part. Oh, so many things to consider. I could do a charge. That'll work. I'll charge right up. This is, again, such a bad idea, but I uh, really want to hurt this thing. So we're going to charge straight in. Um, and we'll just add a quick plus two to that attack. Oh, well, we're going to need it. Four plus two is six plus, whoa, uh, dirty 20? Yeah, that'll hit. Sweet. Five, 11, and 27 points of damage at this troll. Does not die. I'm in so much trouble. She does not die. She looks very bad, though. Just just a little bit of acid at her. And she'll be fine. Yeah, so I think before Kira, the end of Kira's turn, just like bleeding everywhere. I have five hit points left. Um, he says, no pulled punches, and then just a quick thumbs up. Taunting her because she's blind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you a thumbs up. Yeah, she is blind. She is very angry. She's going to lash out wildly with all three of her attacks. So I'm going to say she'll do the bite at Kira and aim both claws at Vargas. What about the little guy behind her? (laughs) She should hit him. She's blind. That is a 20 to hit Kira with the bite. Yeah, that's a hit. 50% miss chance. 50% this time. 96. Oh, that's pretty good. Battle play. That's 12 damage. <sighs> okay. Well, uh, Kira's going to take a quick oh, nap. Oh, no. Yeah. It, was, it was mostly around. <laughs> I was around for most of the fight, and that's what matters. It's fine. Leave me here on the floor. Beside the chainsaw. Unfortunately, you fall into the chainsaw <laughs> that is still running. Yeah, it's still on because it. She just passes out hugging it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, with her last her dying breath, just claws over to the chainsaw. This is mine. Sadly, it's it's on for one minute after you turn it on, so it's just. She's dead. Oh, what a bummer. Okay. Okay, claw at Vargas. That is going to be be a 17. A 50% miss chance and a 75% to hit one of his mirror images. Uh, Mirror images don't affect an opponent that can't see Oh, that's right. Yeah. That is a 3 on the percentile (laughs) die, so that's a miss. And the final claw of her life. That is a 25 to hit. And... That's a hit. 90 on the miss chance. So, max damage. You're looking at 17 damage on the claw as we get the sort of last gasp from Hellscarg. Oh, roll your will save. It's the end of your turn. You might be able to see your demise. They call her Give Him Hellscarg as she gets an 11 on that will save. She still cannot see. She's John Cena. And Asher is up. <laughs> Asher's been in enough combats to know that Kira auto stabilizes. Is that right? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Asher's more confident than Jeff. <laughs> so he it sort of says under his breath, I'll heal you in a moment after we end this. And he is going to rapid shot at Hellskarg. It's not very nice. Spending his last grit point maybe he'll get it back to actually no i can't never mind can't spend the grit point and rapid shot because i need to use my swift action to reload between the two (laughs) calm down commodore it's fine (laughs) Uh, so just the two shots then that is an 18 against touch well while blinded her touch is 10 so yeah 18 will do it seven points on the first shot. She goes down. Oh, heck yeah. And now there's 
<laughs> there's this poor acolyte <laughs> suddenly outside of touch range. So this one will be against regular AC. <laughs> and after taking down Hellskarg and Kalgara, Asher misfires. <laughs> well, at least the timing is, could be worse. And that's the end of the turn. Did get that grit point back, though. That's fun. And uh, Brixby's turn is up, so I believe haste is gone. So you guys are pretty much doomed. Haste is gone. Um, <laughs> I guess there are still two people left. Brixby's going to move 40 feet towards the group. Looking at the remaining two, what I'm going to estimate is probably CR somewhere between one and three characters. And look at them and say, Look who lies before you. The Lords of Rust have succumbed to the very decay that exists in your name. If you would like to not join them, put down your weapons and we'll let you live. And that's his turn. All right, Vargas is up. Okay. Vargas is going to take a five foot step, putting him in range of this Smiler. Not quite in range of the uh, Hellion guy down there though. And he is first going to, he's going to do a full attack action spell combat. So he is going to attack this Smiler with a... Is he wearing uh, metal armor? No. Well, you know what? Shocking does more damage either way, because it's D6s versus D4s. So he is going to attack him with a Shocking Breath and probably miss. So that is only going to be a 16 against regular AC. Meat beats. Oh, I was not expecting that. So 18 electricity and nine bludgeoning. He's still up. And, oh, right, the fire. Oh, God. Uh, and four fire. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's still up, but he, he doesn't want to be. <laughs> uh, I am not hitting him with my second attack, though. For my second attack, I am hitting the uh, unconscious uh, Hellscarg. Punch her head off. That's a 21 against whatever her unconscious AC is. Prone, flat-footed, and defenseless. Yeah, 21 will hit. So that is 8 points of bludgeoning and 1 point of fire. That is uh, one executed troll. Yay! Nice. And Vargas gets a grip point back. <laughs> And it is, uh, that's his turn. All right, so this Smiler, who um, just got hit very, very hard, yeah, he's going to throw down his gun and um, put his hands up. I surrender! I surrender! But um, the Acolyte of Hellion is going to channel negative energy and say, For Hellion! So I'm gonna need will saves from the Smiler, Vargas, Kira, and Asher. What does a will save look like when you're napping? It's not effective. You give me a normal will save. Good, that's my high one. Okay. Otherwise, that would not have been great. And uh, Vargas. Uh, Vargas rolled a 13 for a 19. All right, and um, Asher. Uh, only a 17 for a 26. Okay, and we're saving Kira for last. Uh, what did you get on your will save? Uh, two. The two total? Wait, two plus seven, though. So, like, nine? Does nine work? A uh, nine fails, so you're the only one who fails. Everyone else takes so half damage. Oh, I'm real worried. Yeah, it's a total of two damage, so one damage to everyone but Kira. Two damage to Kira. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and no. then the. I'm gonna go throw up. <laughs> the acolyte is then gonna run 30 feet away. And Kira, you are you still auto stabilized? Or are you you're not now, right? 
Uh, well, yeah, I guess not anymore, but I still have rage rounds, so presumably after. I, actually, I guess I don't know how it works. If you're unconscious and then take more damage, do you keep auto stabilizing? She, she takes, uh, she regains a point every time she goes through a round of rage. So I'm like, assuming yes, unless there's something about that. I don't know if you. I'm talking too much because I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, gaining the hit point back would restabilize her, I think, right? Cool. And yeah, aside from that horrible, horrible second. It's totally fine. All right, Asher is up. Oh man, he took that one point of damage. Should probably just heal himself. No way, he will take a step forward and do a lay on hands of Kira Smith. Five points of healing, not amazing. I'm 2d6, kind of a bummer. I will take it. That's all he's gonna do for now. All right, Brixby. Thanks. Well, I gave you a choice. So, here's a, like my favorite and everyone's favorite material component in Pathfinder, Bat Guano. <laughs> uh, about 10 feet in front of the retreating priest Italian is where the 20 foot radius of my fireball <laughs> goes off. So I need a reflex save. And yeah, I know it is huge overkill for this very low CR character, but just, that was so rude. That's a nine on the reflex save. Right. Excellent. Well, he's not going to miss out on any of this then. 24 points of damage. Yes. Burninated. Great. Love that. Like the countryside, all the people, and their thatch roof cottages. Oh, those are some consummate bees, my friend. <sighs> all right. Brixby, his uh, thirst for blood sated, moves on. Vargas. Vargas is gonna smack this Smiler twice. That is a two on the die, but thanks to uh, Umbral Weapon, I can reroll this and possibly do crappy Umbral Weapon damage. Uh, which I do, so now I get to read this uh, paragraph long <laughs> spell thing. So if you miss a creature, you can reroll the attack. If the reroll hits, the spell hits the target creature and deals 1d8 points of cold damage plus one additional point per two caster levels to a maximum of plus 10. So that would be a d8 plus 3. So he takes nine points of cold damage from my first hit. And second hit is a 15 on the die, so that is... 21. So he will take 13 bludgeoning and two fire. Well, the second hit, um, you were punching a dead body just like as it was falling. <laughs> oh, did. So, um. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he swings the first time and the arm misses, but then one of these weird shadows surrounding the arm hits him and takes him down. And then, uh, Vargas, still kind of in a blood rage, just hits him again. And as the last of the champions of the Lords of Rust fall to the ground, and the sort of dust that all this fighting has kicked up starts to settle, and the fog of war settles down, you're standing in this gigantic, empty arena, and it's just so quiet. It's just so quiet. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Good night, Sam. Night, Sam. Good night, Sam. Good night, Sam. Thank you for not making that performance combat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, he also didn't want it to be a four-episode combat with all the funny. rolling for performance. No. Yeah, I, I couldn't <laughs> in good conscience go through that again. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Well, I have earned a frozen yogurt bar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. You've pushed me to consuming frozen <laughs> yogurt on purpose. <laughs> Ha
plot against the machine is property of its creators, all rights reserved. Pathfinder and the Iron Gods Adventure Path are properties of Paizo Publishing. Please visit them at paizo.com for more information. Theme against the machine, written and performed by our own Zach. Please consult the show notes for additional music and sound effect licensing information. Now it takes time. Never mind. Edit that whole mess out. <laughs> if I can zoom into this map, all right, we're going to take 30 seconds and I'm going to manually zoom in. Keep this all <laughs> in. Great radio. This map is a good size for fun. So then I will, I will use that swift between my two attacks since I didn't declare it before the first one. I was too excited to shoot a laser weapon. <laughs> Understandable. Yeah, I mean, Brixby isn't too particularly worried about it because there are two massive teammates towering over her <laughs> currently like charred and bullet-ridden body. Um, oh. So he's going to move 40 feet. Oh, sorry, one. One. <laughs> one is the other one is laying, laying down, yeah. <laughs> gingerly petting a chainsaw. Um, 